What's going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and we are now live on Instagram. We're live on YouTube and Facebook. We got Robert Sykes in the building. We got Crystal Sykes in the building, and um, we're about to drop some knowledge on y'all. Are you ready? So ready. Crystal's got her mic. She's about to drop the beat on y'all. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to hold my mic. Robert can just talk into his... Not quite. No? Um, yeah, so we're trying a slightly different audio and video setup. Oh, I noticed last time we both had the mics, but I forgot to turn my mic in on, so I was just talking through Crystal's mic. Now we should be both talking through our own mics. Um, so we're going to start off the discussion today with a little topic on how to talk about keto when your friends and your family are not embracing of the lifestyle of the diet. And I feel like we all have somebody that we know, either directly or indirectly, who has been in that situation where they go keto, they're gung ho about going keto, and they don't have a very good reciprocating spouse, friend, parent, whatever that is embracing of their lifestyle. I know that's been the case with my dad. You have, your family's been a little bit more receptive. Yeah, my family really is supportive in like everything I do. I'm very happy for that. I'm very grateful to my family. Um, I think they all thought I was off my rocker there for a while. And I think it took them like two or three years after Robert and I, had, it might have been even four, before any of them even tried keto. But I'm pretty sure they all thought I was psycho for a while. Like, Chris was going to kill herself. She, what is she doing? Lifting these heavy weights and eating all this fat. She didn't know what she's doing. And then I think like, I'm pretty sure every single one of them has tried it now. Yeah. Yep. They have. Wow. That makes me laugh. <laughs> they pretty much all tried it. Um, oh, just funny. to kind of give you all some perspective here. My very first book that I wrote, I, I've slaved over this book. I like Crystal can attest this. I locked myself up yeah. in my office, would write, way into the night, way in the morning hours. And then my dad is a college professor who's incredibly brilliant. And I brought the book to him to edit. And this was like the first or second time Crystal had ever met my parents. Yep. We're sitting at the dinner table. I think it was the second time. Yeah, we're sitting at the dinner table. I asked my dad what he thinks of the book. And he's he looked at me. He's like, this is the worst thing I've ever read in my entire life. You can't possibly publish this. You're harming people's health and life by doing this and saying these things. I highly encourage you not to do it. And Crystal was getting feisty. Her I was about ruffled. to jump over the table. <laughs> yeah. His mom was like, do you want to go check on the horses with me? I'm like, yeah. yes, yes, I do. <laughs> and I love my dad and not going to say anything bad about him, but he was inc like he was the epitome of not being supportive of the diet and lifestyle. Um, my mom has since gone keto and lost a lot of weights, improved her health, but she's kind of like on and off again keto right now, which is kind of tricky. Um, and my dad still kind of mocks the diet. He's playful about it now, but he still kind of mocks what I do. Yeah, he knows. He just knows now that like that's what we do and he has fun with it and we have yeah. fun with it and it's totally fine now. But talking to your friends and family in a way that like if, if your motivation is to try and sway them to keto and, and I mean, which, which it should be. I mean, everybody should want their closest family and friends to be healthier. Mm -hmm. And if you're following this diet and lifestyle and you're convinced of its health and benefit, then it makes sense that you'd want to impart that wisdom onto those closest to you and get them healthy as well. When they don't reciprocate that or they're not welcome to it, they're not open to it, it's hard because it's like you're only trying to help them. But the, the thing about friends and family, and, and Ken Berry says this great, he's like, it's called powder butt syndrome. That's what he calls it, powder yeah, butt, powder syndrome. butt syndrome. Yeah. So like if you go to your parents and you're like, You've been reading all the ketogenic books and magazines and, and websites. And you have all this knowledge, and you're trying to impart that on them. They they may be not in the know at all. You may be incredibly intelligent comparatively. But they are going to think they know best because at some point or another in their life, they patted your butt when you were a baby. So they're always going to think that they know better, they have more wisdom, and you can't possibly know better than they are, better than they do. And if they were brought up thinking that, fat is bad and carbs are good, then you're going to have a hard time convincing them otherwise. The best thing you can do, and we all kind of inherently know this, is to simply lead and live by example. If you're being healthy and if they can see that that health is 
transforming your life for the better, then they're going to start asking questions. They're going to want to know more, but they're going to have to do it on their own terms because they're not going to be willing to just be bombarded by a bunch of minutia that you throw on them all at once. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Robert's always stealing my drinks. Um, and I think a really great way of going about it is I don't even talk about it, really. I When I go see my family, I don't talk about my food. I do not make it a big deal. I bring my own stuff knowing that they may not have something that I can enjoy. Um, they may put syrup all over my meat or whatever it is. Um, so I always bring things that I can enjoy or make sure that I have the ability to go out and get something if I need to. Um, and by putting yourself by putting others before yourself in the, in the sense of uh, convenience, don't make them go out of their way to make sure that there's something for you. Make sure that you are prepared ahead of time. And, and that right there will help them so much because then they don't have to worry about you and concern themselves with you. And um, sometimes people are offended that you don't eat their food. I have a, a part of my family that is – very big into like chocolate gravy and biscuits and all that delicious Southern food. And I love it. And I've eaten that since I was born. Um, and sometimes it, it used to be a little bit hard for me to say no. And they would say like, come on, you've always eaten chocolate gravy. What's the difference now? Um, and I really just said like, this is a choice I'm making for my body and it doesn't affect you know, the way I feel about the food, I'm happy to not eat it and I'm happy to not have that. For me, I just want to be able to eat breakfast with you guys and spend the time together. And I think that they ended up eventually understanding that I was doing it for my health. I was doing it to better my life. And it really doesn't affect them other than you're not going to eat their food. And that is it. That is the end of it. And if they're that offended, then they can learn to deal with it. And I know that's like a little bit harsh, but it is not your responsibility to make sure that their feelings are validated because you eat their food. That is ridiculous. So provide your own food if you think that there's not going to be something available and explain yourself that you're doing what's best for your health, what's best for your body, and you're not pushing that on anyone else. You're just doing what works best for you. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad, I'm glad Crystal said that because... So many people, and again, we all have people in our family that are like this. They have like a signature dish, whether it's like Thanksgiving time. Like my my um, great aunt Alice has these rolls. That, I've never got to enjoy them because I've always been keto. Yeah, but like she has these rolls that are literally. We've made Thanksgiving T-shirts with her rolls, like a picture of her rolls on the T-shirt. Like it's her rolls are the rolls of the family for Thanksgiving. And then my dad makes these cinnamon rolls that were passed down by his granny. So my great, great granny, and he's just like heartbroken that I'm not going to carry on that tradition of making cinnamon rolls. But here's the thing, y'all. And this does sound harsh, but like the people in your family that you're closest to, for me, and this is how I honestly think it should be for everybody, like you're close to that person because of that person, because of that relationship, because of the value that they bring to your life and that you hopefully bring to their life and reciprocate that. And just having a very close knit family member that should not be predicated on the food that's on your plate. When it becomes so emotional as to whether you eat or don't eat the foods they prepare, that distracts from the the depth of the relationship, in my personal opinion. So I don't ever feel like anybody in your family should predicate the quality of the relationship you have with them on the food that's on your plate. And again, that's harsh, but that's just reality. Like you should just be able to explain it to them. Hey, look, I have goals. This particular meal is not in line with those goals. I have no doubt that it tastes amazing. By all means, keep making it for the people that enjoy it. But I'm going to go a different direction with with my feet, with my food. But I really love you as a person and will continue to be there for you. I mean, that's that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. You want to get some questions? Yes. Um, what's up from North Carolina? Hungry Heath. How you Keto from Greg what's says, up, hey, hey. Um... Joy80 says, Heidi from Tennessee. Shannon says, y'all sound good and clear. Sunny said, that's brilliant. I don't know who you were talking to, but I'm assuming you're talking about me. Just kidding. Um, Mike says, my wife and in-laws think I'm crazy and their doctors know best, even though I'm getting healthier and they are not. Yes, that's the weird thing. Like, you can be getting healthier, visibly healthier, and they're not getting healthier, yet 
they assume that they're doing something healthy and you're not. Like, just look in the mirror, people. <clears throat> Dylan says, my family members get so offended when I don't eat all the carbs. Yeah, that's, that is the point where you either have to decide for yourself if you want to enjoy those things with those people or if you're going to say, I'm doing this for the betterment of my health and my body and I'm choosing not to. It is not your responsibility to take care of other people's emotions based off of food. That is something that they have to deal with within themselves because food should not be that big of a deal for any human, especially for someone else to enjoy it. Boom. I'm going to put that on a t-shirt. Boom. Boom. Um, hey, Coach, what's up, Crystal? What's going on, Keto Theo? We shipped you some protein, uh, so I hope that gets to you safe and sound. Um, evening, everyone. What is up? How are you? <clears throat> What's up? Just finished my first submittal for studio. So tired. Ha ha. Very nice. Very nice. Hopefully, hopefully that goes wonderfully well. Um, all right. We need some questions, y'all. <clears throat> you guys are in my throat. We need some questions. We need some questions on YouTube and Facebook. We need some questions on Instagram. Throw them our way. Um, yeah, we need some, we need some to talk about. I was trying to think of something to ask you, but I don't know. We can talk about friends and family all day long. Um, yeah. But I feel like we've harped on that for over 10 minutes now. So. Harped on it. Here we go. Uh, that's such a positive way of phrasing it. Food is very ingrained in our culture, and it's hard to, for some to put that mm -hmm. aside. Really yeah. is, yes. And food is <clears throat> food is really important. Like, I don't want to distract from the importance of food. Like, it's a, it's ingrained in our culture, and that should be a positive thing but not at the expense of your health. Like there's nothing wrong with enjoying great food. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the camaraderie with people that you care about alongside a great meal, but not at the expense of your health. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my caveat there. Yeah. And like there <clears throat> are things that Robert and I do that we enjoy. Like we will have a glass of wine together. We love going out to eat and enjoying food and each other's company together. There, those are things to celebrate. Those are things to do. It shouldn't matter the type of food you're eating to be able to celebrate those things as long as you're enjoying the moment. Um, Texas Gina says, hi, what's up? Lizzie says, have either of you ever done carnivore? Yes, yes we've both we done both carnivore. Have. We both like carnivore. I don't. Crystal doesn't like carnivore. <laughs> I feel really bad when I do carnivore. I have, because I started keto for my GI distress, it is very different than someone who's trying to heal their gut from something like um, uh, bacterial overgrowth or whatnot. Mine is a lot to deal with the muscles and the way that the muscles move the stomach and the intestines. So for me, it ended up causing a lot of pain. But I think that carnivore can be great for so many people. Um, Joy80 says, family and friends ask where I get all my energy and how I lost so much body fat. I tell them that it's not... That it's from <laughs> not eating all the carb-infused food y'all prepare. They laugh but choose not to eat keto. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> Keep living by example. Uh, um, tips on reverse dieting. So the out gain, um, I think without gaining fat. Uh, train more. Train harder, train heavier, train more intensely with more volume. And just slowly increase the calories. Yeah, I would just say slowly increase the calories for sure. Um, and as you're increasing, do something with those calories. Enjoy your weight training and get some more lean mass on your on your body. Keto is the only thing that works for my health. Yeah, ditto on that one. What is your favorite <clears throat> fat to be added to food? Butter. Butter, bricks. Um, I think I love butter. I'm thinking what? I stink and love butter. She stinking loves butter. When we butter eat steaks, and salt, Crystal literally puts more butter on <laughs> the steak than there is steak. I do not. I just have a little little bite with eat bite of steak, and it's delicious. And then like douse it in salt. Uh, carnivore ketovore has been great for my health. Thank you all for answering. Um, IBD. What is IBD? I we are terrible at those. What are those called? Yeah, acronyms? acronyms. Yeah. Uh, gotta have vegetables. Easy. A lot of people don't do a whole lot of vegetables. Uh, Cindy Molina in the building. I'll definitely have to convince family. I'm not gonna die on keto carnivore next month. Back to yes. Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look amazing. Uh, you, you just you just have a healthy pregnancy right now. Um, I, I would keep doing what you're doing. You're obviously doing something right. They can't argue with success. Um, we. 
like we don't want to gain size. We lost the weight and don't want to gain, but we want to increase the caloric intake with no side effects. Um, so you're going to want to gain a little bit. Like if you're, you're going to gain a little bit. Yeah, and, and that's not a bad thing. Um, especially if the majority of that that you're gaining is lean muscle tissue. So And there's going to be a food weight. There's going to be water weight. There's going to yeah. be those things. So you have to give yourself some leverage. Yeah, so embrace that for sure. Um, we're getting all kinds of stuff on YouTube. Well, you Facebook asked them here. for all the questions. Don't allow family to pull you into their addiction. At the end of the day, they are all addicts to certain foods. That's mm -hmm. a good way to put it, too. What are your suggestions on protein intake for a 6-4 to cut down? Also, I seem to hold a lot of water weight with higher fat protocol. Um, what, what are your total carbs? Like if you're holding a lot of water weight, you typically don't hold a lot of water weights with a higher fat protocol unless you're also doing a lot, of, unless your total <laughs> carbs are adding up as well. Um, but you shouldn't add a lot of water weight just from fat itself. So unless would, you're would, eating something that might be an inflammatory like yeah. uh you know cheeses or butter or heavy cream or something like that yeah um, katie kelly podcast was sensational great content oh, thanks for listening uh monica smith says hey yo i always love any info on eating enough more calories and fat while fat adapting i need that message repeated yeah i've been preaching that message from the roof what are you doing babe sorry uh missed my spot up here Let's i wanted see. to look up because ibd yeah because Sunny said inflammatory bowel disease, which uh, that is what that is, but that was a weird place to put it. Um, I don't know. It was like a thumbs up IBD, like maybe way there's, to maybe go. there's multiple mac ma acronyms, macronyms, macronyms. Um, yes, we will definitely keep repeating that message. Y'all just see how Robert just snapped at me. Snapped what at are you? Kids. What are you doing, babe? <laughs> Sheesh. My favorite topic, endurance, athletic performance, and keto. I have found that I can go longer, but maybe not as fast for short, intense events. Um, yeah, so a lot of people notice extreme benefits from an endurance standpoint when they go keto. What I have found is that the short, more highly glycolytic demanding sports are still great for keto, but it requires a longer period of adaptation for that to really, truly kind of equate to what it was when you were doing carbs. When increasing the calories, is it just calories or does it matter if it, if it's higher fat versus higher protein or if or it does or it doesn't matter as long as it's more calories? Yeah, so I would increase both fat and protein yeah. uh, both at the same time. I assume you are at a ratio that works well for your body. So if you just keep that ratio as you keep continue to increase fat and protein at the same time, that would be good. Do you have any idea what your macros are now, Nicole? How uh, I also love butter. Yeah. Uh, I stink and love butter. Stink and love butter too. I stick and love butter. <laughs> stick in. That's funny. Um, count calories on beginning. I think they were talking about in the beginning of keto. You don't. You definitely don't have to. Um, but I think a lot of people make the mistake of starting keto and under eating because the fat is so satiating that they end up under eating and then they wonder why they're hitting a stall. So I think it's smart to have an idea of how much you're eating. Um, you don't have to be crazy about it, but just have a good idea. Make sure that you're getting in enough fat and enough protein and keeping those carbs lower. Uh, Mike says, it's hard to explain to people that their parents did not know the healthiest way to eat. A loaf of bread on the dinner table each night is not good, but it's a habit for them. Yeah, that, that was crazy. mine. I totally yeah. remember that. Like That's how my, my folks and their folks were. Mm -hmm. um, Cindy says, struggling with pregnancy, morning sickness 24-7, little meat aversion. My doctor doesn't want me to eat processed food as protein powder. Any ideas to get my protein in? Hmm. What about yogurt? I bet you could down some yogurt and that'd be pretty good. And like a good yogurt, high quality yogurt without too, without any added sugars. Uh, that would be a good way to get some protein in. Little meat aversion, processed food, protein powder. Sorry, I was just recounting because I like spaced out there for a second. That makes sense. I was right? thinking about our conversation at the conference and then I just like got excited in my brain and then, yeah. Low Carbon Liberty says, I've given up talking to my family on both sides. It doesn't matter that I've lost 85 pounds. At this point, I just hope to be a positive, passive influence in my diabetic brother and sister's life. That's all you can do, man. Mm -hmm. You just got to keep living by example and hope that they follow suit eventually on their own terms. Thanks, Robert and Crystal, for the protein powder. Welcome. Who was that? 
um, Theo. Awesome. Carbs um, cause hail. water weight gain. Yes, they do. Um, how are you? How are we this beautiful evening? We are wonderful this beautiful evening. I'm beautiful this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Arkansas is really getting this the fall vibes. Yes, it is. I have noticed that the leaves are falling yes. and it's uh, that they're beginning to change. Things are starting to dry out a bit. I love it. She just said I meant it helps my IBD. Oh, okay. That was what it was. All right. Um, trying to gain weight for muscle on keto really hard to do. It's not so much that it's hard to do on keto. The thing is, and this is a very important point here, so many people that are using carbs will see much more like real-time uh, increases in total weight because of the, the fluctuations in their, their glycogen and their fluid retention, et cetera, et cetera. And they'll just assume that a lot of that is muscle. If you were to strip all that out of the equation and just look at lean muscle tissue gained on a high carb approach versus a legitimate ketogenic approach, you wouldn't really see this massive difference there. Um, so as long as you're eating at a caloric surplus and providing enough stimulus, i.e. in the form of you know, proper volume with your training and enough intensity to elicit growth, you should be good. Another thing is that so many people... I mean, people, people typically have weight trained prior to going keto. A lot of people do. Like if they've been weight training for a long time and they'll see a bunch of gains when they first start weight training, then they'll kind of have a more muscle maturity and a more mature muscle and that won't grow as rapidly regardless of the diet they're following. Then they'll go keto and they'll see much less growth because they've been training for quite some time. They just assume that it's because they're keto that they're not seeing that muscle growth. And that's certainly not the case either. Um, how is hunting going? Uh, I have not yet been hunting this year, but I've been practicing uh, with the bow on a regular basis. Uh, Sonny said, IBD Investment Banking Division. <laughs> That's all I've got. Yeah. Is that, there's so many acronyms. Um, do you always keep your carbs 20 grams? Um, it kind of depends. I'll typically go uh, 20 grams as just a general rule of thumb. I'll sometimes go to less than 20 grams if I'm in a cut, uh, especially when I get closer and closer to competition. And then if I'm like in a massive bulking phase, then I'll go as high as 30. But even when I'm at 30 grams, my actual ratio of carbohydrates is still incredibly low because I'm consuming a significant amount of fat and protein. Yeah, I would say generally speaking, like for myself, I'm usually at 20. Yeah. But I mean, there's days where I just eat meat. So there's, you know, no real carbs in there, but then there's days where I might have a couple berries on my yogurt and go to 25 grams, you know? Um, Stephanie says, I stopped mentioning keto to family or friends. I just continue to enjoy this lifestyle. I'm the only one in my family that is not diabetic, yet they think keto will kill me. So that's that's yeah. like, there's so many instances of this. Like people improve all their health markers. They reverse their type two diabetes, their, their blood sugar improves, their C reactive protein improves, like everything improves. And then people start accusing them of being unhealthy. It's like, just look at the markers. What is the data telling you? Can I go back to that protein one we were talking about? She is struggling with the protein. Doesn't want her to be eating the processed protein powders. Yeah. Um, a really great way to get in your protein is also by doing um, like a bone broth. So like bone broth with added collagen to it because collagen shouldn't be like a super processed thing or you can add a gelatin powder to it and that will give you more protein as well. Sorry. Boom. Deep thoughts by Crystal. Um, super high protein carnivore. Been on fish kick lately, LOL. Have some steaks maybe one time a week as like a fat refeed. I do love pork chops and chicken breasts though. Sounds like you could probably benefit from increasing the dietary fat. Yeah, I would um, imagine, too, if you're mostly eating lean meats and that's all you're getting, you're probably eating super low calorie because mm -hmm. protein does not have as much as many calories as fat does. So if that's all you're eating and you're not eating like a crazy ton of it, then you're probably eating pretty low calories. So you might want to increase that fat a little bit. Do you eat lean meat like chicken breasts? I don't really eat a lot of lean meat like chicken breasts. However, we did cook a bunch of chicken for the crew, and I'm eating 10 ounces of chicken a day right now. I love lean chicken. Like, I love chicken breasts. So usually I'll add some sort of fat to the meal that I'm having with that, like um, keto brick or maybe like a Primal Kitchen dressing or something like that. Um, exactly. 
Low Carb and Liberty says to Cindy Molina, even though it's made from dried beef, try pemmican. Very high oh. protein, but it's dry, so it might help with the meat aversion. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good, good idea. Biltong is pretty good too. I, like I do, and I do like I do like the liverwurst too, which it can kind of smell a little bit. So that might be a little bit hard for you if you're having like an aversion to the smell of meat as well. But um, it's worth a shot because even like if you could just get one or two ounces of that, it's so nutrient dense that it would be a really good option. And I put like a little piece of bacon on it. If you can stomach bacon right now, um, a little piece of bacon with like melted cheese on top is so good. Um, I like, oh wait, also when is the uh, women's apparel getting an upgrade? I need some ribbed or fitted extra small shirts and Lady Savage shorts. We don't have any shirt or shorts right now, but we do have some of the Lady Savage extra small um, tank tops and t-shirts. Uh, but we are working on doing a lot of the screen printing in house right now. So it might take us a little while to get things dialed in. Yeah, learn how to do it. Yeah, we're learning how to do it right now. So bear with us. We are going to be doing that. It's just taking us a little bit of time. Um, Kevin says, Thomas Lowry got me hooked on Sun Warrior Pea Protein. Should look for a way I slip. Um, so pea protein gets a bad rap by a lot of people in the, in the keto animal based space because it's obviously plant based. The thing about pea protein, pea protein is not a bad protein at all. I definitely don't recommend a soy based protein or something like that, but a pea protein with the proper enzymes, uh, accompanying that so that you can fully absorb it is not bad. I don't know if this, uh, sun warrior protein has that or not, but like our, our vegetable based protein the bricks for instance uh for the brick flavors that use the vegetable based protein those all have a digestive enzyme in there so that your body actually is able to use a lot of that a lot of the plant-based proteins are encapsulated in a cell wall basically so you're not going to get full absorption so you got to make sure you're getting proper absorption of the vegetable based proteins a whey isolate is good but i always recommend a whey concentrate because it's simply less processed um it's not really going to have as much of a glucose response and a lot of the isolates, it just depends what you're trying to do. Like a lot of the isolates are going to absorb more quickly, but if you're taking in ample protein throughout the day, it doesn't really matter if it absorbs more quickly. So I like a minimally processed whey concentrate with simple ingredients. And I typically pair that with a fat source to even slow that digestion further. I like chicken, but I make an Alabama white sauce, easy way to put up the fat and it tastes amazing. Wow. Okay. Sounds I'll have to keep delicious. that in mind. U.S. Uh, wellness liverwurst is so good with scrambled eggs. Love mm -hmm. that meal. Hmm. Yeah, you can't go wrong with U.S. wellness liverwurst and scrambled eggs. How many times a day do you eat? Mm, usually like two, maybe a third time. Two. Exactly. Thank you. You bet, Kevin. Roberts. Love the name, man. Uh, any chance on doing a home gym setup at some stage? Want to be more self-sufficient. Um, mm. Are you asking if we're going to do a home gym setup? Or are we going to record content on a home gym? Or what, what exactly do you mean by chance of a home gym setup? We do have a gym here at the compound, and it is so nice to be self-sufficient. I would totally recommend doing it if you're thinking about it. Yeah, I don't think I could really enjoy going back <laughs> to a corporate gym. How do y'all – this is a good question. How do y'all feel about the blood type diet choice? I think it's a bunch of bull honky. I don't even know my blood type. I should probably know my blood type. I don't even know my blood type. Um, but I've heard all different kinds of things that one thing works for one person, one thing works for the next person. Um, I don't think that it is probably 100% correct. There might be some things to it, like you're eating a whole food diet. That's probably the one thing. Um, so if you're going from eating like a super processed uh, diet and then all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm going to do the blood – what is it? Blood type diet thing. Um, and I'm just going to eat these nuts, this chicken and some rice. Then of course it's, you're going to feel a little better because you're not eating a bunch of processed junk. So I think that there probably are some benefits to changing things. But not but I, for the reason that they say the benefits That's are. exactly right. Um, okay. It says, no, what we need for a gym, set, for a home gym setup. So our oh. basic home gym setup would be we did do a whole live on this too. Yeah. Uh, but to recap, I would get um, a squat rack. 
I would get a barbell with some rubber bumper plates. I would get at least an adjustable dumbbell, preferably a dumbbell you know set of a pretty good range of dumbbells, um, and an adjustable bench. If you have that, you can do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then they make they're making these really cool cable attachments where it's like just a singular singular cable attachment that you can mount to your wall. Um, so you can do like tricep extensions, pull down, stuff like that. Um, I would definitely get that if you can. Crystal, have you been able to enjoy the house and decorate? Finally, homeowners. <clears throat> yeah. So Robert was a homeowner when we first met. So we had that house in North, in uh, was that Spokane in Washington State. Um, and then we got this house in December of last year, and I really did a lot, of, most everything before we actually moved in. Mm -hmm. So we were able to kind of just move in and get to our everyday life, which has been really nice. All right. So we're rounding up on time here. Let me knock this one out. Low Carbon Liberty says, have you considered making a pemmican keto brick, by the way? Agree with you about the biltong. I go through two large bags a week as Costco sells it now. I didn't know Costco sells it. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Um, I'd be all for a pemmican keto brick. The problem with a pemmican keto brick, and I actually have made one. I made one with ribeye. Um, and bacon grease, and it was delicious and totally shelf-stable. The problem is I don't think most people would be willing to pay the cost necessary for it to not put me out of business. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, it's not going to be a cheap brick. It's going to be much more expensive than the other bricks uh, because it's it's just so expensive from an ingredient standpoint. But I would totally make a pemmican brick. Hey, Robert, do you have a man cave now? Ha ha. Robert has an entire compound. Let's get that clear. Robert yeah. has a gigantic podcast studio, and Robert does not need it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we actually are going to tear down that house that is on our property, and we are going to build up a sweet shop for Robert to be able to do whatever the heck he wants. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited about that for him. And then I have plans to um, change the garage into something different, so... All We're right. both going to get something. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Jeannie says, been doing protein sparing modified fast uh, and following Maria's recommended macros the other days, looking at grams, but I'm finding my calories are very low. Protein sparing modified fast days, 800 to 900. Other days, 1,000 to 1,200. 75 year old, 175 pounds. And you said you're doing three times a week of protein sparing modified fast. Okay, so I don't want to talk bad about anybody. I certainly don't want to talk bad about Maria. I I mean no disrespect towards Maria. If somebody sends this video to her, then hopefully she can watch this part that says, I mean no disrespect towards her. She's done a ton for the keto community. I've got several of her books on my bookshelf right across the room. However, I would never recommend anybody eat that low of calories unless they're six months old. So I would highly encourage that to be bumped up quite a bit the problem is when you eat 800 calories three times a week and the other days you're only eating a thousand to 1200 your body's baseline caloric intake is in the tank your hormones are going to tank your metabolism is going to tank everything is just not sufficient that's not conducive to sparing any lean muscle tissue you can't possibly hope to build more muscle tissue you can't possibly hope to upregulate your metabolic rate um so that's just not sustainable in my opinion I have preached for years about the importance of fueling your body properly. Even if you have fat to lose, you don't want to eat that little. I mean, when I'm taking a competitor through a competition prep, even if they're like a tiny five or like five foot, you know, little bitty female, I'm still feeding them more than that with weekly refeeds. Like you don't need to go that low to see the compositional changes that you want to see. There's a much healthier, more sustainable way to go about it. And yeah. I, I will say if the protein sparing modified fasting is something that is really, you're really drawn to it for some reason, and that's what you want to do. Uh, Rachel Gregory has a really great way of going about it. And that is being in a, a surplus on all of the other days. And then having, how many days does she do protein just once a week? Yeah. I did a podcast with Rachel. Yeah. Um, there's a whole podcast on uh, protein sparing modified fasting. Uh, with Rachel Gregory and Robert, fantastic, um, and and they just talk about the benefits and the um, 
opposing view of not so beneficial and why each person would think each way, I guess. Um, and, and I think the consensus is that you have to be at a surplus on those other days or you are significantly under eating all the time. And it's just not good. It's not sustainable for your body. It's not healthier for your body. You're literally starving yourself. So just keep that in mind. Please feel free to check out that podcast. I think Rachel has it on her podcast. Robert has it on his podcast. It's such a good listen um, that I highly, highly recommend you do you listening to that. I made an Instagram post last week about the um, the Nazi concentration camps, and they were feeding the Jews 1,300 calories, which is a feast by protein spare modified fast standards. When the war got really bad, they dropped it down to 700 calories. And that was after it got really bad. So, I mean, the idea of of eating six, seven, eight hundred calories multiple times a week willingly, it's just it's just not conducive to health. I mean, that's just how it is. Um. All right. So, um. Oh darn, I can't remember oh, his actual name. Also, miss one more thing here. Um. There's a little bit of a lag right there now. There is. Why is there a lag? Hopefully, all that, that was. I don't know why there's so much of a lag. So hopefully, people are hearing us and seeing yeah, us. Yeah, hopefully, okay. it's going straight through. I'm going to go over here. But what did she say over there? You can read it right from here. Um, she said, thank you. You confirmed my thoughts. CrossFit three times a week and regular gym 32 times a week. She said three, three times a week. I was sure I needed more calories. Yeah, if you're training, especially, yeah. you've got to fuel your activity. I mean, calories are not bad. Uh, we, we put this fuel. You can put good fuel in, you can put bad fuel in, but you have to put ample fuel in. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember his name. No Laws Claws. What's his name? That's my old roommate. Yeah, Ethan Clare. Ethan. Gosh dang, I don't know why that couldn't pop in my head. Said, so, love you, Robert. Love you too, brother. Uh, what do you think about the red light thing for health? <clears throat> The red light thing? Red light a therapy? red light therapy, I'm sure. Uh, there's there's a lot of, you know, research that's getting uncovered right now about red light therapy. There have been some pretty interesting case studies of red light therapy on uh, your testicles improving oh. your hormone count, your testosterone count. Weird. So, I haven't gotten my levels checked in a while, but if I'm low, I'm going to go get me some red, red lights. <laughs> Uh, Keto Brick came in for the first time yesterday and love it. Awesome. Great. Music That's fantastic. Um, zero lag. Y'all still look super sexy. Don't worry. <laughs> Thanks, man. The lag's on the YouTube and, and Facebook. We got two, two monitors going here. here. Yeah. Uh, Monica says, does the body get more efficient metabolizing food after being keto for a while? <laughs> Therefore, we need less calories. I saw a video with Mark Sishin who mentioned this. Yeah, so that's actually a really interesting concept. Um, basically, the whole concept is as you get more efficient at using the foods you eat, you get better absorption and you need less total food. I think he mentioned that on a podcast with uh, Joe Rogan as well. The thing is, if you're trying to, to perform and train and excel from an athletic standpoint, you're going to constantly be pushing the envelope and demanding more of your body, and that's going to require faces, which I hope everyone is. It doesn't really stand to reason that you would need to titrate your intake down, but rather titrate it up. Mm -hmm. um, how many calories above maintenance do you recommend to gain muscle without gaining body fat? It's going to be a little bit different for everybody, and everyone's going to gain a little bit of body fat when they go into a surplus. Um, but it doesn't take a whole lot. Like you can gain a pretty significant amount of muscle if you're training properly in just a 500 calorie surplus. Uh, Sunny said, remind me not to use Robert's red light. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't used it yet, Sonny. <laughs> um, are planning to get more hats and stock caps and hoodies? these two yes we are planning to get a bunch of everything yes but it's going to take 
take some time. Today. Yeah, we did get some samples in today. Yes. Um, all right, so it's lagging super bad on YouTube and Facebook. And I we're think 39 still hearing. minutes in, so we're going to call it quits on that. Um, apologize for people watching the YouTube and Facebook video Hopefully right now. Hopefully it's not actually lagging. It's just for yeah. us. Um, but we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for all the questions. Y'all have a wondrous day, and we will catch you next time. Ta-ta for now.